Congress aiming to right a wrong this week after being arrested on unlawful weapons charges back in 2013 and then finally pardoned in 2015. New hope is being restored for concealed carry owner Shanine Allen as legislation heads to the House Judiciary Committee that would ease the burden for legal gun owners who are crossing state lines, sometimes into states that are a lot stricter. Here now to discuss is that woman, Shanine Allen, and the man behind this legislation, Congressman Richard Hudson. Thank you both for coming on this morning. Shanine, I'm going to start with you. This, this is back in 2013. You're driving from, I think, Philadelphia, and you go into New Jersey, which is not much of a drive at all, maybe 30, 45 minutes to get there, and you get pulled over, and you've got this gun in your purse, and that's where the trouble started, right? Kind of take us through it. Yes, so I was driving to Jersey and I had my kids and um, I was throwing my, my son a birthday party and I got pulled over and stopped by a state trooper um, and I had my license to carry and I had my firearm on me and I let the trooper know that I had it on me at the time hmm. and I was arrested for 48 days in state prison. 48 days, so I mean you're doing the right thing. Obviously you, you carry a gun, you're legally licensed, licensed in the state of Pennsylvania, which is not the easiest state to get a license by the way, uh, to carry yeah, a gun, probably to protect yourself to, to protect your kids, you admit right off the bat that you have the gun, you get thrown in jail for 48 days. Did that seem a bit egregious to you, a bit of an overstep in the state of New Jersey? Very, very much, because I've never been arrested a day in my life, and for someone like me that just wanted to get a firearm to protect myself, me and my children, I, I got thrown in state prison. State so prison. That was very, very hard for me. Governor yes. Christie eventually would uh, dismiss the case, uh, would exonerate you from this in 2015, but that was probably a long two years. Uh, Mr. Hudson, I want to go over to you real quick. Um, this is a, a, a tricky situation, obviously, because every state, you know, I think, you know, the, the Constitution believes should have the ability to enforce laws the way that they deem they should. Uh, and in this case, it's almost like it, it, it's, it's a tricky one. Would, well, would it's a tricky situation. Yeah. Sure, Rob, it's a tricky situation for law-abiding gun owners because uh, you know, all we're trying to do is protect uh, someone who's trying to do the right thing, protect themselves, protect their family. And the way the hodgepodge of state laws you have now is set up, it's very hard for someone trying to do the right thing to avoid becoming a criminal simply by crossing an invisible state line. Doesn't this, would you say though, if I can play the devil's advocate, doesn't this impede on states' rights to design their own laws? Well, great question, but absolutely not. Uh, Article 4, Section 1 of the Constitution says each state should give the full faith and credit to the legal documents and proceedings of every other state, and that Congress has a responsibility to determine how those documents are recognized. That's why, for example, when I drive from my home in North Carolina to D.C., uh, when I hit the Virginia state line, I don't have to stop and take a new driver test, get a new driver's <laughs> license. The state of Virginia recognizes my license, uh, but in the same way my legislation would say, I have to follow all the laws of that state. So some of the critics of this legislation uh, bring up all kinds of ridiculous doomsday scenarios. Uh, but the truth is, this is a very simple common sense measure that says each state, just like now, almost half of the states do recognize every other state's reciprocity. Uh, it, the states would just have to recognize that's a legal right to carry, but then you as an individual sure. would have to follow all the laws of that state or municipality. Yeah, well, that's uh, you make a very good point there. Shanine, back over to you. I mean, what was this like to go through for you? I mean, you're a law-abiding citizen. You have a, a legally owned gun. You cross over into New Jersey, which is right next to Pennsylvania. It's a quick little shot. And all of a sudden, you're in jail for almost 50 days. Well, every day has been giving me PSD, and yeah. my kid's been going through it. But um, I'm actually glad that it happens to someone as strong as me and that I'm here to stand up today to fight, to help, and try to keep my kids um, as well aware as I can on the gun laws and what's going on and what happened on their mom. Um, yeah. that I was trying to protect myself and protect them, and it ultimately got me in trouble. And this is something that needs to stop now. Um, even today is, is my birthday, and I live today to see another year <laughs> and, um, and celebrate it with my kids and, and with you all and to stand up and fight for my, not only my gun rights, but everyone else's. Well, you, so it's you a blessing. are a, a great reason that we have uh, that amendment in the Constitution and we have the right to bear arms. We thank you for that, and, and we're glad that you've been exonerated, and we'll see if this will be full vindication for you with this law. Congressman, thank you to you as well, and Shanine, happy birthday.